Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a supernatural horror film from 2016, titled Drag Me to Hell. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In 1969, a family goes searching for a powerful medium Sean Sandina because they need her help. Their son thinks that something awful is coming for him because he stole a silver necklace from a gypsy wagon. Sean quickly realizes what's wrong and takes the boy inside, while the curse that's after him keeps getting stronger. It interrupts Sean's session before she can do anything and drags the boy to hell. Christine is a small-town girl that has moved into the big city to work as a loan officer at a bank. She's a nice and helpful young woman which makes her boss and co-workers think they can treat her as a pushover. Her boss is even ready to give the assistant manager position to her co-worker Stu, who's joined the bank fairly recently, but has shown that he can be very cutthroat in his limited time there. Christine is anything but cutthroat, for now. She has a boyfriend, Clay, who's a professor at a university. One day, while having lunch together, she can be seen giving him a rare coin she found at the bank, that he can add to his nerdy coin collection. As she's leaving his office, Christine stops to drink some water and overhears Clay's conversation with his elitist mother, who doesn't seem to like or respect her because she was raised on a farm. The woman has no problem saying that to her son, but Clay has been dating Christine for a year and he wants her and his dad to finally meet her at dinner because he loves her. That day just keeps getting worse for Christine when an old lady comes in the bank to ask her for another extension on her loan. Mrs. Ganesh has had two extensions on her loan already, but has fallen on hard times since her illness and would need another one. Christine goes to talk to her boss to ask him what to do about the matter, and he tells her that it's her decision if she wants to give her another extension or go ahead with the repossession of the old woman's home. She's put in a tough spot, knowing that it's a test from her boss to see if she can make the tough decisions, so she tells Ganesh that her request for another extension to her loan has been denied. The woman naturally gets very upset and tries pleading with Christine, moreover, she drops to her knees and begs her for help. When Christine tries to get away from her and denies her pleas again, the old woman gets offended thinking that she has shamed her and attacks her. Security drags Ganesh away, but Christine's boss tells her that she has made the right decision for the interests of the bank. Later, he's seen giving her the files on an important client that she has found for the bank. He implies that she's come at the top of the list for the assistant manager position and for a brief moment it feels like her luck in life has turned. But, when she leaves work that night, Christine gets a visit from Ganesh in her car. You shamed me, she says to her, and grabs her hair, whispering curses in her ear. Christine fights back and they have a long struggle until Christine slams her car into another one sending the witch flying to the front seat. The woman doesn't leave it be though and tries to bite her face even though she lost her fake teeth. Christine pushes her away and Ganesh finally puts her dentures back in, coming to attack her again when Christine shoves a ruler into her mouth. She pushes the woman out of the car which only makes her angrier so she breaks her window and drags her out of the car. Ganesh rips off a button from Christine's coat, puts a Lamia curse on it, and gives it back to her. She tells Christine that it will be she who comes begging her soon. Later, Clay comes to pick her up from work and when they pass by a fortune teller's shop, she begs him to go inside. He doesn't like the idea because he doesn't believe in it but still ends up paying for the session. The seer, Ram Jass, takes Christine's hand and immediately notices her missing button. He stares off into the ether as strange things occur in his shop, then lifts her hand and sees the powerful demon that she was cursed with. That scares him so he tells Christine and Clay to leave with a full refund, but he still answers her questions about what he saw. He explains that someone has cursed her. Clay takes her home, trying to reassure her in the car that Ram Jass is a scam artist and that she shouldn't be afraid about anything he said to her. That night, Christine is at home with her kitten when odd things begin to happen in the house. It cracks and crunches like somebody is trying to get inside when suddenly all the windows open, scaring the little kitten too. Her house looks like it's being possessed and she sees a demonic image in the shadows that attack her. Later, Clay comes over to take care of her, but he doesn't believe Christine when she tells him that it wasn't Ganesh who entered her house. He calls a doctor to have a look at her who says that it's just paranoia from the stress she experienced that day. During the night, a fly starts circling Christine as she sleeps and it gets into her mouth waking her up. When she lies back down, Ganesh is lying next to her. She attacks Christine again, trying to bite her face off, the vomits putrid things all over her. Christine wakes up from her nightmare next to Clay and tells him that she couldn't wake up from the nightmare. Later, Clay takes her to work and tells her not to piss off any old ladies again. As soon as she's on her desk, Stu comes over and asks her to teach him about some bank stuff. When he sits down and she begins explaining the problem to him, his hand transforms into the old woman's hand, prompting Christine to stand up and tell him to get his hands off her desk. Her phone rings and when she answers it, blood begins to drip from her nose and as her boss comes over to help her, Christine begins to spray vomit blood all over him. She freaks out and gets out of there fast, leaving ample room for her co-worker to steal the important client files from her desk. Christine goes to find the old woman to beg for her help, 
just as she told her she would. When she gets to the house, it's not her that answers the door but her granddaughter, saying that her grandma told her she would come. She tells Christine that she's not welcome there but after her pleas for help, the granddaughter lets her come inside. Christine walks in and the granddaughter shows her where to go to find her when a bunch of people shoves her into the house, laughing. They're actually attending Ganesh's wake which Christine learns about the hard way, falling on top of the dead woman's body. The table it was on breaks and sends them both falling down, with the body on top of Christine, leaking something nasty into her mouth. When a few men grab the body to take it off Christine, it grabs her hair and rips a piece of it from her head. Ganesh's granddaughter tells her that she deserves everything that is coming to her. Christine goes to see the seer again who tells her that what plagues her is the Lamia or the Black Goat, summoned only to perform the darkest deeds. For the first three days, the Lamia appears as a nasty spirit, tormenting its victim and after that, it comes for the soul of the owner of the accursed object. Christine remembers that object to be the button, making Ram Jass step back away from it, and asking what she should do with it. He says that as long as she's the owner of the cursed object the Lamia will still come to take her to hell. Christine asks how she can get rid of the curse and the seer tells her that she might try to appease the demon with a sacrifice. She refuses to do something as vile as that, but still takes the book he offers her. Ram Jass tells her that when it comes for her, she would be surprised about what she would be willing to do. Later, she looks through the book as her kitten meows at her when she suddenly hears the cracks and crunches of the Lamia in her house once more. The demon's shadow begins appearing stronger than it did before, hunting her throughout her house. Christine goes up the stairs to her room and it follows it there. She locks herself inside and goes to call Clay, but he doesn't pick up. Lamia's hooves can be seen in front of the door and Ganesh's face screams at Christine through her phone screen. Suddenly, Lamia's shadow begins to change into arms and reaches for Christine when she escapes its grasp barely. She tries going out the window, but the demon is there too, scaring the life out of her. It grabs her and spins her across the room, then flings her into an opposing wall. Christine is finally broken. She grabs a knife and calls out to her kitty. She does the thing she never thought she would, crying as she kills the kitten. When she finishes burying it in her yard, Clay shows up and notices the blood on her sweater. He believes her when she says it's tomato juice. Nevertheless, he thinks that they should postpone the dinner with his parents they have that night because of everything that has happened to her lately. Christine insists that they should still go, convinced that her sacrifice has made all of her problems with the demon go away. Christine puts on a nice dress that Clay loves and they go to the dinner happy that it's all worked out. Clay introduces Christine to his parents and his mom instantly starts giving the girl grief, eyeing the cake she's made for them with disgust. The mom still accepts the cake and takes it to the dining room with the others following her there. Their cat Hecuba hisses at Christine, probably sensing what she's done and that she has a demon on her tail. Clay's mom doesn't understand how their sweet cat can react to someone like that. During the dinner, Clay tries to play up Christine's achievements but his mom heckles her regardless. Christine explains at length what she does as a loan officer, but that still doesn't impress the woman. The two of them finally bond when Christine is honest about her family and her mom's problems with alcohol. The mom says that her father was also an alcoholic, but unlike Christine, she never dared to admit it and she respects her for her candor and backbone. As they begin to talk and laugh over the dinner table, they get served a slice from Christine's cake and even the mom is glad to try it now. Suddenly, Christine hears the sounds of the Lamia again somewhere in the vicinity of the door. She asks Clay if he heard something as well, but he hasn't. Christine goes to eat her slice of cake and sees a fly moving inside of it when Ganesh's eye appears in the piece. She stabs it with a fork and it leaks goo and blood all over the plate. Christine still pretends that everything is alright even when the cake sucks up her fork. Then Clay's mom asks her something which she didn't understand and she gives a wrong answer, prompting Clay to correct her. When she finally takes a bite from the cake, she chokes on it, then coughs out a fly, disturbing both parents enough to stop eating her cake. Suddenly, she starts hearing an unbearable noise and banging on the door so she grabs a glass and throws it at the door, screaming to be left alone. Clay calms her down and she says that she wants to leave, storming out of the dining room. Clay's mom tells him not to follow her because she's a sick girl. That night, she goes to the seer again and rampages through his shop, saying that she did what he told her to do. Ranjas explains that they are dealing with elusive and powerful forces and that there are no guarantees when it comes to dealing with them. He says that she must talk to the demon and dissuade it from taking her soul with the help of someone that he knows. Christine has a hard time believing him, so he reminds her that Lamia will come for her after the third day. He adds that the woman he knows can help her will need to be paid heavily because she would also be putting herself at great risk from the demon. Christine asks how much and he tells her that she will need to pay $10,000 cash, but the next day. The following morning, Christine goes to work to talk to her boss about an advance she would like to get for the assistant manager's position. However, he informs her that the important deal with the client was cancelled and the bank's branch is going to have serious problems because of it. 
To keep it short, she won't be getting the promotion, but if the position becomes available again then Stu will get it. Christine leaves work and starts grabbing everything from her house that she can sell. As she gets certain items from her shed, Ganesha's spirit attacks her and shoves its fist down her throat. Christine drops an anchor on its head and its eyes splatter all over her face but vanish when the spirit vanishes. Later, Christine pawns her stuff, and the man is only willing to give her $3.800, unwilling to negotiate. She takes the money and is aware they're not enough to solve her problem eats some ice cream and cries. Clay arrives at her house and tells her that he paid Ram Jazz for her even though he doesn't believe anything. He says that he knows that she believes it and that he wants to help her however he can because he wants to take care of her. Later, Clay drops her off at the medium's house where the seer is already waiting for her. He introduces her to Sean Sandina, an experienced medium who's dealt with the Lamia before. Sean answers Christine's question about what happened honestly, saying she lost a young boy's soul to the beast. She wants to redeem herself and finally defeat it with Christine's help to summon it. Sean takes Christine and Ram Jazz to her special spiritualist room. It was built on a location with a particular convergence of energies which allow a doorway between the world to be opened and let others pass into ours. The three of them sit at the table and Malosh, Sean's assistant, brings in a goat to be a part of the session. Sean explains that they have to trap the demon inside the goat when it appears. Christine will have to place her hand upon the animal and then Malosh will kill the goat to take care of the demon as well. They start the session with Sean saying that they all must be receptive. Ram Jazz tells Christine that she must invite the dead to co-mingle with her spirit and that when she does, she must believe in it or else it wouldn't work. She keeps repeating after him I welcome the dead into my soul. The session progresses as they speak the words and Sean sings until she feels the spirits arrive there. Now that they've opened the doorway, different spirits appear in the room, but still no Lamia. Christine sees them in the room until Sean drives them all away, then says that Lamia is coming. They can see and hear its presence in the room. Suddenly, it possesses Sean's body and tells them so. Ram Jass asks it what it desires so it tells them that it desires Christine's soul. The girl still denies making the tough decision for the loan, but the seer silences her and talks to the demon asking how they can dissuade it from taking the soul from an insignificant woman. Christine gives it her first attempt to place the medium's hand on the goat, but Lamia laughs at Ram Jass saying no to his pleas. When she reaches for Christine, she finally puts her hand on the goat transferring the Lamia there and making it extra angry. The goat says that she tricked it when Malosh runs over with the knife to kill it. It bites his hand, re-transferring the Lamia into Malosh's body. When it goes after Christine, Ram Jass tries to banish it, but it just attacks him and then dances on top of a flaming table. The seer commands it to leave again but gets another beating. Finally, Lamia can go after Christine and it tells her that it doesn't accept her cat as a sacrifice, vomiting it out of its mouth. Ram Jass wakes Sean and she finally banishes the spirit out of Malosh and from the room. Christine thanks her, but the woman has a heart attack and they are forced to call an ambulance. The seer tries to save Sean in the meantime, but she still dies. Later, as her body is being taken away, Ram Jass tells Christine that Sean didn't banish the demon Lamia for good, but just from that session. He tells her that when the night is through the Lamia will come for the owner of the accursed object. The only thing she can do, something he didn't want to tell her before, is to give the object to someone as a gift. As Clay is her home, she loses the envelope containing the button in a shuffle of documents, but looking through them she thinks she found it. When he drops her off home, Christine tells him to meet her at the station in the morning so they can go on a vacation. During the night she torments herself, wondering who she could give the button as a gift to. At one point, she wants to give it to Stu as well, but when the time comes, she changes her mind. Suddenly, she has an idea and goes to consult with Ram Jass again. Christine asks if she could gift the cursed object to someone that has died and after a little bit of research, he tells her that she can. She drives to the cemetery and digs up Ganesha's grave, then rips open the wooden casket, revealing the dead body inside. Christine first tries to put the envelope inside the body's hand, but she can't do it, almost like it's still fighting with her. So, she resorts to opening its mouth with a shovel, making the gift official by stating it to the heavens, and shoving the envelope down Ganesha's throat. Once all of that is over, she almost drowns in the grave since it has rainwater pooled inside. Christine manages to pull herself out of there thinking that she solved her problem. The following morning, as she's getting ready to meet Clay at the station, her boss leaves a voice message about Stu. He says that Stu wanted to steal the important client from Christine and broker a deal with another bank. So, in light of that, her boss will be giving her the assistant manager position. Christine arrives at the station to meet Clay, happy that everything has resolved nicely, but he suddenly gives her the envelope with the button back. She mistakenly took the envelope with his coin from the car the previous night. Christine freaks out and starts pulling back, falling down on the train tracks. The ground opens and Lamia drags her to hell as she begs for help and Clay watches it happen in terror, unable to do anything to help her. 
Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.